Hi everyone, this is Dr. Mike, host of the free iTunes podcast, Psychiatric Secrets Revealed with Dr. Mike, but that's not why I'm here today. This is another Saving Savvy episode, and this time we're doing another camera review. And we're going to review a very unusual camera. It's the Nikon S01, which Nikon bills as its smallest camera ever. So let me show you that. It comes in a variety of different colors. This one happens to be the red one. It's very small not too thick. Let me kind of compare that to a enthusiast compact camera, the Nikon P7000. So we look at it there just to give you an idea of the difference. You know, gigantic difference. And let's take a look at a typical compact camera, a camera that we use all the time around the family. This is the Sony DSC W560. This is a couple years old but uh, and very pocketable by the way, but even that camera is smaller and a bit I mean the, the Nikon is smaller and a bit thinner so it's really a very tiny camera so let's take a look at some of the features and let's look at how they made this camera so small it has a 3x zoom and that's a 29 to 87 millimeter equivalent zoom lens and if you turn it on you know, it kind of pops out like that and you can control it and it has a little digital zoom addition. Uh, it has an actual real flash as opposed to an LED flash. Not very powerful though. They say about a 1.2 meter range, so pretty anemic. It has on the back, I want you to leave that on. Um, it has on the back, let's see if you can, can you see me? Probably not. Am I there? Um, a 2.5 inch, eh, there I am, a 2.5 inch. 230,000 pixel uh, display in the back, which actually uh, is, looks better than you would think with that amount of pixels. And the every, since there's so little room on the camera, the way you control everything is all touch screen. So this camera is extremely simple. It's extremely limited as far as what you can adjust. And in fact, um, there are just several camera modes. You have a general mode that will have like an automatic scene selection. So the camera will determine if it's, for instance, a, a landscape shot or a macro shot, which I think they call close up, or if it's a portrait or several others. It has what's what they call stop motion, which instead of saying that it increases the shutter speed, for whatever reason, Nikon says the ISO is increased, which basically would increase the shutter speed so you would stop action. Um, there's a few filters that you can apply when you're taking a picture, for instance, uh, high contrast black and white, or sepia, or a high key or a low key type of picture. I'll show you a couple of those in some examples. And uh, it has uh, actually the ability to do 720p video, and that's at 30 frames per second and it also will do VGA video so it has some video features but there's not a lot that you can control uh, in post-production in other words when you're looking at a uh, picture that you've taken there are some additional filters that you can apply and they actually look kind of nice so you can apply things like a toy camera effect or a miniature effect or other black and white effects and other things like that too nothing too extraordinary but uh, they're there if you want them um, but there's not a lot of editing that you can do post-production so you can't crop or do things like that uh, one feature that was nice about this camera is its red eye reduction this camera is definitely designed for a casual shooter and so the red eye reduction not only has that little annoying blip 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 kind of flash but also there's some a picture processing that if the camera recognizes a red eye it will actually kind of delete it in software too and that seems to work pretty well and I'll, I'll show you some examples of that so how do they get this camera so small they did it in a couple of different ways one way is that there's really no accessible battery or memory everything is built in the battery is built in the memory which is about 7.3 gigabytes of accessible memory is built in so you're not buying anything additional there and the only port that you have in fact my fingernail will hold out ah come out is this little I can't get it there you go is this little USB port on the bottom and this is not a traditional micro or mini USB port um, I did see some people in reviews call it proprietary to um, 
to Nikon. That's not the case. It's just one of those weird USB connections. Fuji cameras have used that connection on some of their cameras too. But the problem with that, of course, is, is that people lose cables. And if you lose a cable and you're on vacation or you're even at home, you're kind of out of luck. You're going to have to order one online. You just can't walk to the Walmart and get a replacement cable because they're not going to have it. And um, since you have to charge through the cable, since the cable is the only way that you can get uh, pictures off the camera, it's pretty important to have that cable. So you might even want to consider buying a, another one just so you have a spare one if you tend to lose things. So the other thing that's, that this camera has is a very small sensor. Now Nikon says it's a 1 over 2.9 sensor. That's roughly about, well, like a, a standard a standard sensor, which is pretty small in a Digicam, would be about 1.6 times bigger. So this is really a small sensor. It's the type of sensor that you would normally see in a digital camera. Um, so we'll look at that a little bit too. And because of that, small sensors tend to have poor dynamic range, poor low light per, uh, performance, more noise, um, and those sorts of things. So we're going to see if this camera holds up. Uh, if you look on the website of Nikon, there's some really beautiful pictures, but of course those are all done under ideal conditions. The pictures that I'm going to show you are much more standard pictures that people would actually take. Again, I'm not claiming that they're uh, uh, photographic masterpieces by any means. They're really not, uh, but they'll give you an idea. The other thing is I am going to show you a shot comparing this camera with a similar picture from this camera and also this camera comparing a picture from just to show you the size comparison an iPhone 5. Um, now they are similar but not identical because these are all done in automatic mode and so the camera is going to determine the ISO and the shutter speed and all that and different cameras uh, will choose different settings so this is just to kind of give you an idea about that and also as a disclaimer of course I think the iPhone has an 8 megapixel sensor this has a 10 megapixel sensor and this particular Sony has a 14 megapixel sensor. I personally don't think that makes much difference, um, but just, just so you know, again, these are sort of slightly apples versus oranges comparisons, but they'll, they'll give you an idea. So let's take a look at some of those pictures. We're also going to look at a little bit of video, see what that looks like, and, uh, and then I'll come back and I'll give you my opinion. Okay, in this first picture, this is at an ISO of 200, just of a simple object in normal lighting, flash to not fire, looks pretty good, pretty good detail, um, looks kind of like a digicam. However, when you go to more of a landscape mode, this is a more complicated picture. We're now at an ISO of 125, but it just looks sort of flat and lifeless. This was taken at the 1 60th of a second, and it, it has much more of that cell phone little tiny sensor look. This is just a shot of uh, a wall and a lamp and some other things. This is at an ISO of 250, and you probably can't see it on the, on the video because it's, of course, being converted and reconverted. But there's definitely some noise even at 250, and I would say that even around two, an ISO of 200, you start to see some noise in the, in the pictures. This is a close-up showing a 3x zoom. So, if we uh, the first picture was just wide open, and this is at uh, 3x zoom. This is an ISO of 800. Doesn't look particularly more noisy in this picture than the last uh, it, the last shot, but uh, just gives you an idea of what the zoom looks like. Again, this lens goes from 3.3 to f of 5.9, so it's not the fastest lens in town. This is just the sepia look. This is done uh, as a one of the options. Kind of looks nice. This is the high contrast black and white. Again, I think that looks pretty nice too. And it has, again, that low key and high key also, which I'm not showing you here. This is just a shot of my messy desk. And here again, when you have these kind of simple objects around, doesn't look too bad. I mean, I think it's kind of colorful and looks pretty good. This is an ISO of 160. Um, a little noise, not too bad. And this is a post effect. So this is an effect that I applied after the camera was taken. This is the toy camera effect, which I think is kind of attractive, actually. And it does come with a variety of other post-production kind of effects that are useful if you like playing around with those sorts of things. 
this just gives you an idea of the macro or what they call close up function. this is a tiny sensor, so you would expect it to have good macro functioning. and indeed it does. i think the macro looks very good. this is in an iso of eighty. not a lot of noise and this is my son for some reason this was in an iso of six forty strange and the flash fired not a bad shot but pretty soft not very good dynamic range not a lot of detail and to contrast that this is a similar shot um, again with the little sony camera that i showed you now the sony chose an iso of two hundred these again are not exactly exact comparisons but you can just see looking at this shot a lot more detail a lot more dynamic range my son looks a lot more alive in this picture than he did with the other shot from the Nikon um, this is just one where I tried to kind of photo retouch it a little bit I know it's a little bit too blue but even with some uh, adding contrast and sharpness and things the, the Nikon just doesn't perform as well as the Sony did right out of the box here is a shot without the flash this is from the uh, the Nikon and this actually looks pretty good this was done in an ISO of 400 here again I'm not seeing as much noise as I have in other shots so I'm not quite sure why that happened but the low light performance actually was surprisingly good especially when you compare that to the Sony Digicam which I think doesn't look nearly as good this is also an ISO of 400 just doesn't look very good and I was studying both of these shots as well as I could but no tripod or anything like that this is just an outdoor shot doesn't look bad uh, maybe a little flat um, but doesn't look bad at all this is another outdoor shot doesn't look too bad um, because it was a bright day and overcast this is these are at ISO 80 so there's not a lot of noise in the picture I'd say it looks fine here's just a shot of some dead leaves um, I'd say they look fine too uh, not as crisp as I might see with other cameras or as much definition but not bad uh, now here we're doing something a little interesting this is that same Nikon uh, the same the you know S01 you're not going to be able to see this in the uh, on the YouTube video but I'll tell you there's sort of like a little pebbly noise that I can see in the paint in the room and if I zoomed up I would be able to see that uh, on, on the objects like that coffee cup for instance this is at an ISO of 320 now this is a iPhone picture now the iPhone made a different decision since the iPhone has a nice f 2.4 lens it shows an ISO of 64 so this is not an exact comparison but again this is pretty much noise free the um, the iPhone also chose to saturate the colors more so if you look at the two pictures the Nike the uh, picture from the iPhone generally looks better however the interesting thing is is that the sharpness is actually about the same as the Nikon the iPhone sharpness um, and the dynamic range is really about the same too so all the talk about the iPhone it's certainly a nice picture I'm not knocking it but it's really not that different from this little Nikon but the settings that the camera chose or that the iPhone chose I think it just made better choices here we have the uh, Nikon again and this is at an ISO of 200 you probably can't see it but there is noise and here is the Apple the iPhone 5 again choosing an ISO of, of 64 in this shot to um, f 2.4 which the Nikon, Nikon can't even get down to not that much sharper not that much dyna more dynamic range but just better choices that make the picture look a little bit better this is a close-up of the Nikon to show you some of that noise in the background I hope this shows up on YouTube and it's pretty evident and this is a close-up of the Sony again at a much lower ISO but pretty much noise free okay now we're going to look at a little bit of video these are two very short clips the first clip is just of some moving traffic on a cloudy day so kind of ideal filming conditions video looks fine nothing um, spectacular a little flat like you'd expect from a tiny sensor the second one is an indoor shot with just a few 
uh, kind of table lights, lighting, uh, my daughter playing the piano, a couple things to note there. One is it actually did work pretty well in low light. Uh, however, there definitely is some noise and some artifact that you can see. But uh, I'll say it actually worked better than, let's say, my DV camcorder from probably five or six years ago. That cost a lot more. It's just technology has gotten better. But the other thing is, is that the automatic volume control or automatic level control for the audio is horrible. And you can see how, how much clipping there is when she's playing the piano. So this would not be something to film a band concert, for instance. It might be okay to film a conversation. So let's take a look at those videos. So what's the bottom line with this camera? Well, it's really cute and it takes okay pictures, but overall I think that this just good old Digicam and just about any Digicam would take better pictures because it has a better sensor and has a little more dynamic range. So if you're looking for a pocketable camera, this is certainly pocketable as which are many other cameras in this class, I think I'd go with something like this because the cost is less. It has more features, the picture quality is somewhat better. However, if you're looking for the absolutely smallest camera around that you're gonna find that takes okay pictures, and if you don't have a cell phone that takes pictures, this might be acceptable for you. Um, otherwise, go with just the standard. Take care, and if you have some time, please give my podcast a listen. It's called Psychiatric Secrets Revealed with Dr. Mike. It's absolutely free. You can find it on iTunes and other places. Just search for Psychiatric Secrets Revealed or search for my name, which is Mike, last name K-U-N-A. Take care and have a great day.